praise God. We greet you again in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be with you another Sunday. God has been good. God is good, and he will continue to be good. This morning, or topic this morning is leaving and inheritance. Hallelujah. We'll be taking our lesson from two portions of scripture. Uh, we will start with Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22. It says this, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up. For the just. Could we just pause as we turn to God? Father, we thank you for your word. You said that your word is forever settled in heaven. Lord God, whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is also loose in heaven. So, Father, I pray that you loose my tongue today, that I will speak your words, Lord God, to your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As I said at the beginning, the title for this message is Leaving and Inheritance. And I read from the book of Proverbs that tells you a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. You see, in Trinidad and Tobago, we are not of a society. In fact, most of us do not know what an inheritance is. So I went and I looked up the word inheritance and I got one dictionary meaning to get the property or money of a person who had died. So in the term inheritance, a lot of people will consider inheritance something being left for you. Something that somebody had left for you, whether it be property, whether it be money, whatsoever. It could even be a gold watch. It doesn't matter. But it gives the idea of somebody leaving something for you. And sitting back as a young man with two children, I came to the realization, what kind of inheritance should I leave for my children? And thinking about this, I, I went through the scriptures and, and, and I found something very interesting. I look, and while looking, I've observed that inheritance uh, being left could be considered one of two things. It could be considered just a physical thing. But in digging deeper, I realized that there is an inheritance that I need to leave that is worth much more than money, lands, or any physical thing. And this is what I want to branch off into according to Luke chapter 12 from verse 13. And it says that a man came to Jesus and he asked Jesus a very critical thing. Judge between me and my brother, because there was an inheritance left, and my brother will not share the inheritance with me. Jesus in verse 14 answered and said, and he said unto him, Man, who made me judge or a divider of you? And he said unto them, Take heed and bear and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things that he possess. And he continued to tell the story right here in Luke concerning a man who had many means. The Bible puts it like this. He, his farm was so big, his produce was so great that he decided, I am going to tear down my bonds. I am going to restore a bigger barn. And then I will say to my soul, Soul, sit back, lay back. You can take an ease. You can sit back now because you have stuff to supply you for many a years. The point of this is not that he had many stuff. 
It's not that he consists of many things. But Jesus in verse 18 brings a very sobering thought to the whole matter. Jesus says it makes no sense that you lay up things down here where muck can corrupt. Where thieves can break in and steal. But there makes more sense that you lay up things. Lay up your treasures in heaven where thieves can cannot break in and steal where thieves cannot rob you lay them up in heaven therefore my idea on my mind went why should Jesus say something like this so there in Bible times we have the, 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 the story of the prodigal son and this is the next case of inheritance here, the younger of the two sons came and he spoke to his father. He said, Father, I know in our culture that the father glazed up for his children. Therefore, divide to me my portion. He did not wait for inheritance, which means for the father to die. He did not wait until uh, that day that the father decides to turn it over, his portion to him. But he decided, I will go to my father. And therefore, I will ask him for the portion that belongeth to me. You see, a lot of us look at the prodigal son and only sees that part. But also remember the son that stayed at home. He had his portion, but he was waiting to inherit it. That his father would die and everything would be his because his brother had taken his portion and leave. And I remember the story because there came the time when the prodigal son came back home. And this elderly brother who stayed with his father through thick and thin. It's rightfully whatsoever is left belong to him. Because according to the Jewish society, the eldest son will inherit everything that the father has. Therefore, when that man came to Jesus, he came with a point. His elderly brother, I am thinking, in this case, his father had died. And everything, this elderly brother claimed everything as his. So this younger brother came to Jesus, asking Jesus to step in, to intervene in the matter. We have today in Trinidad and Tobago families that are torn apart because of lands, because of inheritance. But I'm here to let you know today, there is a greater inheritance. You see, the Bible tells us about Jesus. In fact, if I can go to, to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 29, it says, And everyone that shall forsake house, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, or, or namesake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit eternal life. Could I share with you some of the things I think about eternal life? You see, the most idea that you need to gather is this. You can only inherit when the person is dead. And look at this. Bear with me. Eternal life can be yours. But listen. The man who guarantees eternal life, who is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he died, therefore bringing into will, bringing the will into being, that this can, you can receive eternal life because he had died. Therefore the will can be affected. You can now have eternal life because you can inherit it because the person who gave it has died. Eternal life is yours, not only because Jesus Christ had died, but he had rose again from the dead to make sure that somebody does not put this eternal life in jeopardy. You see, many times in the court of law, a family member could go and appeal 
and appeal the judgment or what is written in the will but Jesus Christ as he says he ever liveth making intercession although he is dead to bring the will or bring the inheritance into being here Jesus Christ is alive to make sure that his will is carried out one other thing I need to look at with an inheritance we need to look at leaving something for somebody. I want, to, I want to share this with you. In the book of Genesis chapter 18 from verse 19, hear what God says about Abraham. God says, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall see, keep the ways of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. The point I want to make to you is this. In our lives that we are living, we need to leave an inheritance. The inheritance that, that Abraham left was not only wealth, was not only a physical thing, but what's important is that what Abraham left was a fear for God. I think when we're looking through the, the, the nation and how we are going through this nation, we need to start to leave a godly heritage. We need to leave a people that will fear God above all things. Above everything else, what we need in Tobago today is to leave our inheritance of God. For too long, we have allowed our children to go anywhere. Let the television bring them up. And the television leaves. The only inheritance it knows is the way of the world. But I'm here to let you know, if Abraham, God can save Abraham, I know that he he will command his children. You see, this promise does not only go towards your children, but it extends to your children's children. God wants you to leave an inheritance which he can be proud of. God could look at Abraham and say, Abraham, I know that he, he will. Sir, can God look at you today and say that he will or can boast of you that you will leave the most important heritage, the most important uh, thing to your children, which is God. Abraham did it. I want to read in Timothy chapter 1 from verse 5. It says, when I call to remembrance... The unfailing faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grand mother Lois, and then thy mother Enos, or Eunice, sorry. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Here am I, Paul saying that Timothy, I can see in you. An inheritance which you got not only from my preaching. An inheritance you got from your mother Lois. Your, in fact, your grandmother Lois. I believe she was a woman that feared God and taught her, mother, her, her daughter Eunice the things about God. And therefore Eunice turn in turn taught her son about this great God. The inheritance which was passed down is faith. You can pass down faith to your next generation. You see, at times we work so hard. We try to uh, uh, accum accumulate all this wealth. I am not saying wealth is bad, don't get me wrong, because as parents we need to leave something stand, uh, substantial for our children. But what I'm saying is that Paul recognized that this man, this young man, has something that was passed on. 
The faith he has in God was not only came about just overnight, but something was passed on. My mind thinks about uh, some men who have meant a good deal to me. In fact, now I'm living in their inheritance. Men like the two youngs, Brother Elliot, who started that work so long ago. And I now can sit back and say, I've inherited what these men have started. These men had left an inheritance that I can proudly stand today and say, I trust God because of what these men have laid down. Can you, sir, can you, madam, say for a sure that? And I will leave an inheritance. For too long we look at us or our inheritance as only being something physical. We look at our inheritance as only being something that, that, that's tangible that we can walk with, hold on to. Some of your children. In fact, I remember my daughter telling me, me and my wife some years ago, she was small. She said, Daddy, I will never leave home. In fact, when you all get old, I, I, I will put you all in a home and I will take the house. And I sat back and I said, this cannot be the only inheritance I should leave for my children. Not lands and house and money in the bank. That should not be what I am remembered for. You need to pass on something more than money, more than lands. You need to leave a godly heritage. This is what I believe Trinidad and Tobago needs today. This is what I believe the people of the island is longing for. Something that they can hold on to. Something that's tangible. That is eternal life. God had already signed the deed. Delivered the document. But it's for us to live the life that will tell our children and our children, children that there is a heritage of God. I like what John 3.16 says. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sir, the heritage you should leave for your children is eternal life. You don't need, in fact, leaving money and things. A friend of mine a few years ago, he was complaining to me. He said, I left Oh, I gave my son a parcel of land. And before I could have turned around, he sold that land and he bought a car. And a few months after, he crashed the car. And then he came knocking on my door for a place to live. He said, Curtis, I didn't know what to do. He said, I don't understand the youth today. I am letting you know what you need to leave is a godly heritage. This is what people of the young people need. The young people need to know that when they leave this scene, they can leave also something that's tangible, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the word of God, which is faith. They need to know that they can leave something for the next generation. What are you leaving as an inheritance? Sir, so today... You may be thinking just as I am. You may be wondering. But there are men in the Bible. There are people in the Bible who talks about inheritance. Let's say David, in for, in, for example. David did not only leave the kingdom for Solomon. And I'm glad for that. David in all his wealth, all that he had accumulated, David did not only leave a physical. But David left with him. In fact, David said to, Sa 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 to, to his son, he said, come let me teach you wisdom. And David sat down with Solomon and taught him the ways of God. So you see, the problem sometimes is that we take Sunday school for granted. We think that Sunday school in Booker Point on a Sunday night, that is the way. But I'm here to let you know, there is a time when we need to sit down and be taught the ways of God. It's not all the time you can sit at home and read your Bible and think that this is it. 
Sometimes you need to bring yourselves to a place that you could understand the word of God together. David taught Solomon. And in return, Solomon wrote and Solomon taught his sons. Solomon taught his sons the ways of God. I am here to let you know today, in order to pass on a good heritage, in order to pass on that thing that needs to be passed on, which is more than money, you need to know God. How can a young man cleanse his ways? Only by taking heed to the word of God. Solomon said, Sir, today you need to take heed of the word of God. How else can we teach our young people that picking up a gun and picking up a knife, sir, is not the only way that they can leave an inheritance? Some people talk about the village I am from. And they, they say that sometimes there are stigmas uh, relating to that village. And people, taxi drivers sometimes don't want to come into the village. But I'm here to let you know, sir, we are starting a new trend because we are teaching our children and our children, children, the ways of God. This is the only way to break the curse. Because, sir, same way you can inherit a godly heritage. If you leave it unchecked, if you leave it unattended to, your children can inherit a bad trait. When we look at our society today, the traits that we are leaving, to Trinidad and Tobago is known now in the Caribbean as one of the, the high spots of murders. Because of the, the, in, the, the heritage we are leaving, we forget and we, we, we stop our children from praying loudly in schools. We can't read our Bibles in schools. When you think about the American society, when you take God out of the equation, only the devil will rule. When you take God out of the schools, when you take God out of the classrooms, sir, what you expect our children to inherit? They will have their own way. They will do their own thing. Because if it feels good, then do it will be the norm. And then it will pass on to our next generation. But I'm glad to hear what Jesus says in Luke chapter 12 and verse 21. He says, lay up. An inheritance, or so he, so is he that lay up his treasures to himself, and not, and is not rich towards God. That man therefore will lay up treasures as though one who is laying up in a barn that you have what must, and and you have things to corrupt. When you lay up treasures, only in this physical world. You will only lay up treasures that mud and time can corrode. But there is a treasure that you need to lay up in a heavenly place. Jesus says that in this place, when you lay up these treasures there, that thieves cannot break in and steal. Some of us, we have our houses with burglar proofing just to keep the bandits out. And sometimes it comes to our detriment because you, uh, maybe a fire comes and it traps you inside of your, your burglar proof. Sometimes a thief will come and break in and steal all you have. So sometimes the bank machine will go bad. And when you push in your card, you can't find a cent. When you store up your treasures on earth, so that's not the best place that Jesus suggests. But Jesus suggests that we so store our treasures. Why? Because where your treasures is, that's where your heart is. Today I ask you, what inheritance will you leave for your children? What inheritance will your treasure, will your heart be with God or just on the earthly things? It's time that we set up this treasure in heaven. Where you can installment, pay your installment in full by receiving Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Receive him who had died on the cross to enact the will. Jesus Christ did it. 
So today, you may be looking at this broadcast and you are wondering, my soul is looking only towards earthly things. But I'm here to let you know you can look to God. Because the greatest inheritance was given. The greatest inheritance, your treasure that is worth more than pearls and diamonds is your soul. Jesus paid the price for your soul. And he gives you an inheritance which cannot be corrupted by earthly things. For it is in heaven. Heaven is promised you because Jesus died to send you and take you and I to this heaven. Store your treasures there. Teach your children that the inheritance that they need is heaven. Today you've listened to this broadcast. You've taken the time to hear what this brother has said. I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot tell you about the deed that you have in, in, in the drawer. I cannot tell you how to use your money in the bank. But as a preacher, I can tell you, store up that which is most dear to your heart. Your children and your children, children. Give them something more than physical gold. Give them something more than houses and lands. Give them Jesus. Today you are listening to this broadcast and you want to firstly receive this inheritance which is eternal life. Would you bow with me? Because you cannot give it if you don't have it. Bow with me. I want to pray for you. I want to pray now. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I need to inherit your kingdom, which is heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender my life to you. Amen. Father, for those who have prayed that prayer, could I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you will touch the hearts and lives of these men and women who decide to surrender their lives to you to inherit that which they cannot buy, to pass on that which they have now learned. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm Brother Curtis. I'm glad again in your presence. See you next time. God blessings. Amen.